and Kent is one of the best painters in the game. So why are you drawing all ugly of us? You didn't say anything about any of these white boys. And none of these white boys function like that. Well, guess who's not jumping on the Cat Williams bandwagon after his spicy comedy industry revelations? None other than the one and only Dave Chappelle. Yep, you heard it right. Dave is not Team Cat on this one. In a surprising twist, he's throwing some shade at Cat Williams, and fans are totally taken aback. So, what exactly did he say? I, I love everybody, but I love Cat Williams more than a lot of people. And that nigga is wild! I mean, Dave Chappelle has shared his thoughts on Cat Williams' recent Club Shay Shay interview, in which Williams calls out other black comedians. Chappelle spoke about Williams on stage at Monterey's at the Hollywood Improv on Friday, an event hosted by comedian DeRay Davis. What part of the game is this? He only ethered ends. He didn't say anything about any of these white boys. None of these white boys function like that, Chappelle said of Williams during his set. Cat is one of the best painters in the game, so why are you drawing ugly pictures of us? Stop. Hurt people hurt people, but I am a hurt person that never hurt people, and he does it all the time. F this one, and F that one, and F this one, Chappelle said, impersonating Williams. But N, I didn't hear anything that you did wrong. He didn't do nothing wrong. Cat didn't do nothing wrong. Cat was talking about ish that ends did to other ends, but not about anything that ends did to him. Chappelle then went on to say if he told his story, it would break your heart, and that he lost everything and never, ever told on anybody. He went on to say that he does F with Cat hard, but questioned why Williams would call out his peers when all of us are trying to be in a better situation. Now, Chappelle's comments have received mixed reactions from fans with some agreeing with him, while others claiming that he is just a hypocrite. Can't trust Dave now if that's really him. Only sellouts and people of the same kind as them would say such a thing. Knowing people and children are being used, AB'd and sacrificed in that world, I know he knows, one fan commented. Another fan added, Dave Chappelle is salty because his his video was launched on Netflix the same day Shannon Sharp interview with Cat Williams which broke the internet. Meanwhile, there are some fans who are convinced that Dave Chappelle was just trying to warn Cat Williams to stop exposing these elites before he is forced to stop by the powers that be. One fan commented on this saying, I took it as a warning to Cat. Dave knows exactly what will happen next. He has been here, done that. This was a very serious issue that everyone has tried to laugh away. Cat knew how serious this was. He opened Pandora's box. For context, in 2005, Dave Chappelle stunned fans in the entertainment industry when he abruptly left the production of the insanely popular Chappelle show and took a trip to South Africa. He said that he was unhappy with the direction the show had taken and expressed his need for time to reflect on the tremendous stress of being in the limelight. Chappelle's decision to quit the show meant walking away from his $50 million contract with Comedy Central. Tabloids at the time speculated that Chappelle's exit was driven by substance addiction or mental health problems. Problems. Chappelle also revealed that he had observed how others were treated before they reached the pinnacle of fame. Many entertainers, right at the cusp of a breakthrough, found themselves embroiled in scandal or personal turmoil. Chappelle pointed out examples such as Mariah Carey's sudden descent into supposed madness after a massive $100 million deal, and Martin Lawrence's infamous gun-waving incident, which occurred during his rise to stardom. I mean, you see before, look, Mariah Carey made a $100 million deal, and three months later, she's all of a sudden mysteriously crazy it's the fame couldn't stand the fame yeah in any case, Chappelle's outspoken nature on issues of race and representation in the industry also earned him both praise and criticism. When he criticized the lack of diversity in Fox's approach to programming, he highlighted the underlying racial biases that can exist within the entertainment world. His candid statements challenged the status quo and sparked conversations about systemic racism and the importance of genuine representation in the media. However, Chappelle's relationship with the industry wasn't without its challenges and moments of disillusionment. He expressed his dissatisfaction with the Hollywood system, citing his negative experiences and a desire to return to a simpler way of life. Chappelle exposed the alleged manipulations of industry higher-ups who sought to control him, using his name and likeness in perpetuity throughout the universe, as per contractual obligations. Beyond that, another conspiracy theory that has long been a topic of discussion is that black male entertainers are coerced into wearing dresses on screen before achieving fame. Several successful black comedians and actors 
actors have courageously come forward to share their experiences, acknowledging that they were pressured to wear dresses even when it served no purpose in the storyline. During his interview, Chappelle alluded to the pressure he faced to create socially irresponsible sketches that aimed to make people laugh at him, not with him. It seemed like a ploy to compromise his integrity and put him in a vulnerable position. But wearing dresses was not the only issue Chappelle confronted. He connected the dots between black actors being pigeonholed into such roles and the broader industry mechanisms. His revelation about a movie set where he discovered a dress in his trailer, despite it not being part of the script, shocked him. Even when he voiced his discomfort, the writers and producers persistently pressured him, claiming that all the greats had done it. All the greats have done it! So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. After taking a hiatus from the industry, Dave Chappelle returned to the spotlight with a series of stand-up performances that not only re-established his presence, but also solidified his place as a true comedy legend. His comeback was met with enthusiasm from fans and critics alike, as he once again demonstrated his unique ability to blend thought-provoking content with comedic brilliance. Chappelle's performances became a platform for him to delve into societal issues while cleverly infusing humor into his narratives. Renowned for his fearlessness in addressing sensitive subjects, Chappelle's material during this phase of his career covered a wide spectrum of topics, ranging from the political landscape to matters of social justice. This boldness was particularly evident in his choice to address uncomfortable truths head-on, even if it meant challenging prevailing norms and beliefs. Audiences lauded his capacity to engage them intellectually while evoking genuine laughter, making him a standout performer in the comedy realm. In any case, many fans are not happy with Dave Chappelle calling out Cat Williams since he is also received his fair share of backlash for his problematic comments and jokes on trans people. You see, back in 2017, in a series of stand-up shows at New York City's Radio City Music Hall, Chappelle made jokes aimed at trans people for at least 20 minutes. In August 2019, Netflix released a stand-up special, Sticks and Stones, in which Chappelle performed more material about trans people, including some content from his Radio City shows. In an epilogue to the special, he brought up his friend Daphne Dorman, a trans comedian, whom he said laughed hardest at his jokes about trans people. In his 2021 stand-up special, The Closure Chappelle joked about J.K. Rowling's 2019 statement that transgender women were not actually women and were a threat to her identity. For context, in 2019, she publicly defended a British researcher named Maya Forstadter, who hadn't had a job contract renewed because of her transphobic comments on social media. Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who'll have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that S is real, the author tweeted, adding the hashtags I stand with Maya and this is not a drill. In June 2020, the writer retweeted an opinion piece discussing people who menstruate, taking issue with the phrase. She wrote, people who menstruate, I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wumbin, Wimpund, Wumud? She went on tweet further about her views. If S isn't real, there's no same S attraction. If S isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of S removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth, she added. The idea that women like me, who've been empathetic to trans people for decades, feeling kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e., to male violence, hate trans people because they think S is real and has lived consequences, is a nonsense. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. Rowling subsequently received a slew of hate messages and death threats for her comments on S and gender, with the hashtag RIPJK Rowling trending on social media at the time. Rowling was then labeled a TERF by the LGBTQ community, which stands for Trans Exclusionary radical feminist. They canceled J.K. Rowling, my god. Effectually, she said gender was fact. The trans community got mad as S. They started calling her a TERF. I'm team TERF, the comedian said in the special. Gender is a fact. Every human being in this room, every human being on Earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. This is a fact, Chappelle added, before saying that trans women's genitalia are not 
quite what it is. In the days after the special was released on Netflix, many flocked to social media to issue criticism and demands for Netflix to take down the special. In a statement, Glad said, Netflix has a policy that content designed to incite hate or violence is not allowed on the platform, but we all know that anti-LGBTQ content does exactly that. Trans activists pointed toward Chappelle's erasure of black trans people in his framing of the debate as being between black rights versus trans rights, and argued that Chappelle misstated the extent of J.K. Rowling's trans transphobia. David Johns, the National Black Justice Coalition's executive director, called for Netflix to remove the special, writing to Deadline, with 2021 on track to be the deadliest year on record for transgender people in the United States, the majority of whom are black transgender people, Netflix should know better. Perpetuating transphobia perpetuates violence. And most recently, in The Dreamer, which debuted December 31st on Netflix, Chappelle addressed the previous controversy while doubling down on his opinions about the transgender community. In one story in the special that's gone viral on social media, Chappelle recounts when he visited Jim Carrey on the set of his 1999 movie, The Man on the Moon. He called me up and he goes, Dave, um, he says, I'm doing a movie with Jim Carrey. Um, do you want to meet him? And I said, Yes, I do. At the time, Carey employed a method approach to portraying real-life comedian Andy Kaufman by remaining in character at all times. And Chappelle was told by the crew to address Carey as Andy when he met him. Anyway, I say all that to say, that's how trans people make me feel. Afterward, Chappelle joked that he wasn't going to talk about trans people more than three or four times in the special because it wasn't worth the trouble. Chappelle also claimed he was actually trying to mend his relationship with the transgender community by writing a play about a black transgender woman whose pronoun is sadly an A. It's a tearjerker. At the end of the play, she dies of loneliness because white liberals don't know how to speak to her. It's sad, he joked. Chappelle also made light of California prisons, allowing inmates to be placed according to their gender identity, saying he planned to identify as a woman if he was ever arrested, so he could get placed in a women's prison. He also commented on how he was attacked on stage by an LGBTQ assailant in 2022 who was triggered by the comics material. Chappelle mocked the media's reaction to the assault, saying that he could have been R by his attacker, who identified as bi Anyway, Cat Williams is no stranger to calling out the industry puppets and their masters. For starters, we have Hollywood's dress curse. This is basically how the industry compels black comedians to don dresses in order to become famous and powerful in the industry. In a 2013 interview with Black Tree TV, while discussing his role in Scary Movie 5, Cat delved into some interesting topics, including a theory about black actors being forced to wear dresses on screen in order to progress to the next level of fame. It's worth noting that this interview came out not long after Kevin Hart appeared on an SNL skit wearing a dress. When asked about Dave Chappelle's claims that black actors are pressured into wearing dresses, Kevin refused to cross that line. Definitely haven't ran into to put on a dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged. He further said he has to protect his brand at all cost. You should keep in mind that this interview came out shortly after Kevin Hart appeared on an SNL skit wearing a dress. See, when Kevin was previously asked to comment on Dave Chappelle's claims about black actors being pressured into wearing dresses. Years later, when Kevin Hart appeared on SNL wearing a dress despite previously claiming he would never do so, many fans accused him of selling out to the Hollywood elite. This situation brings us to what Kat said when he was asked to comment on it. He explained that the whole issue is much bigger than Kevin Hart because he wasn't the first or last black actor who wore a dress before making it big in Hollywood. Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now... <laughs> According to Kat, Elites' next target was Kevin Hart. So now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. After Kevin Hart wore a dress on SNL, his career skyrocketed, landing him lead roles in blockbuster movies and filling up arenas. Cat Williams has also called out hip-hop moguls like Diddy and Jermaine Dupri. In fact, in a recently resurfaced video, Cat Williams unearthed disturbing claims of alleged grooming and violation by both Diddy and Jermaine Dupri, targeting young male artists, including 
including the infamous Criss Cross. You see persistent rumors surrounding Jermaine allegedly being involved in some way with Criss Cross, or permitting other elites such as Diddy to exploit them, have continued for years. At one juncture, Jermaine responded to these allegations, firing back at a fan's comment on a now-deleted Instagram post that referenced a lawsuit from 17 years ago, saying, yeah, 17 years ago you were Ming Criss Cross, even had a lawsuit which they won, but it was kept from the public. The lawsuit, reportedly won by Criss Cross, was kept under wraps. In his retort, Jermaine vehemently dismissed the claim, stating, You must be out of your effing mind. I should sue you for writing this disrespectful on my page. F out of here. Despite the lack of solid evidence, the specific rumor has endured, and Cat Williams added fuel to the fire by publicly labeling Jermaine with a derogatory term. In a 2011 video, Cat took shots at various personalities, including Diddy, Jermaine, and Steve Harvey, dubbing Jermaine the King of Peas. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah? Jermaine Dupree, king of the f you at me. At the time, people thought that Cat was high on something and did not take his allegations seriously. However, despite being publicly labeled peas, these celebrities did not comment or even sue Cat Williams for his slanderous comments, leaving many fans to wonder, was Cat actually telling the truth? Well, given the recent allegations about Diddy supposedly taking advantage of his artists, fans are now casting a skeptical eye on other influential figures in the industry. In fact, one celebrity who has since come out to expose him in a lawsuit is Cassie Vin Ventura. The lawsuit contended that over a period spanning more than a decade, the rapper purportedly subjected Cassie to coercive control, substance use, physical AB, and forced engagement in intimate activities with male escorts while recording the encounters. Most recently, Cat ruffled some feathers with his extensive interview on Shannon Sharp's club Shay Shay podcast. For starters, Williams insinuated that Steve Harvey plagiarized Mark Curry's role as Mark Cooper in Hangin' with Mr. Cooper on his series, The Steve Harvey Show. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had, he told Sharp. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal, and he wear a suit, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. He also asserted that Harvey would never make it as a movie star, which is why he sticks to hosting Family Feud and sitcoms. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star, Williams continued, mimicking Harvey. This the same end that hated on Bernie Mac with this same thing. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You have to have range. The comedian was particularly scathing when it came to Cedric the Entertainer, whom he described as a walrus and a plagiarist. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? He said, it don't line up, Williams said. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018. You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019? and then did it on the Kings of Comedy? What doesn't line up? This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. After going on to accuse the comedian of joke theft, he redirected his attention to Steve Harvey before circling back to Cedric. He called him a walrus, who isn't multi-talented, failing to live up to his entertainer title. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't write jokes, William said. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Williams then described radio personality Ricky Smiley as a liar over his claim that he was supposed to play Money Mike in the 2002 film Friday After Next, a role which Williams played. Smiley, meanwhile, played a Santa Claus robber, but he claimed Williams was supposed to take that role instead. He asserted that Smiley, Cedric, and Harvey allied against him. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all my auditions is because of Steve and said, he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side, they know what it is, he added. When talking about Ricky Smiley, Sharp asked him why he put something like that in his contract. That's where he's a believable actor, he said. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. Perry, who has played the divisive comedy character Medea in 13 movies including one animated feature, got a mention later in the interview. We put too much pressure on Tyler Perry, you know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on, he said. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All them could walk through the mall without security. Be what you going to be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in there, put some other gay people on. Put somebody on, or don't be wondering why people 
keep saying gatekeepers, because clearly y'all keeping these gates. At one point, the comedian said he walked away from $50 million offers four times throughout his career in order to protect his integrity, which then shifted to him criticizing Diddy, who has been sued by four women over allegations of SA, including by his ex-girlfriend Cassie. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about, right? Because P. Diddy be wanting to party, and you gotta tell him no, he said. You gotta tell him no. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you, that's why I can say them so freely," Williams continued. Earlier in the interview, he prided himself on getting this far in Hollywood and still having a virgin hole and never sucking a pee. He later suggested that Diddy likes to claim ownership over women. When I see people's wives and stuff, I don't even look at them. I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I know how blessed I am," he said. If I look at it, I got it. That's how Diddy be feeling. Williams also said he believes Kevin Hart might be an industry plant because of how successful he's been throughout his career. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart, Williams said. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. He said that he hates to come across as a petty individual for picking apart lies, but he wanted to set the record straight. He later added, For a five-year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk. In any case, as Kat continues to speak out and expose the Hollywood elites who are allegedly behind this cancel culture, he faces an uphill battle. The industry is a tightly knit web of power and influence, and those who dare to challenge it often face backlash and attempts to discredit them. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.